Candyman, based on a story by Clive Barker, not Raw Doll. We follow Helen, a college kid who wants to do a thesis about Candyman, a ghost killer that appears if you say Candyman five times in a mirror. Kind of like Bloody Mary from school. Or Beetlejuice. Helen's in a relationship with her college professor. That's not alright. And there seems to be a bunch of murders happening that kind of seem similar to Candyman. Helen's friend Bernadette doesn't like that idea. She only signed up to look at ghost stories. And Helen's like, there's no ghost. The killer would just come through the wall behind the mirror. Kind of like Ruth McCoy. So the two drive out to Caprini Green to investigate the Candyman. And it looks just about the same as it does today. It's a suburb of Chicago. The two investigate and find a place that kind of looks like Helen's place. And up oh, there is a room behind the mirror. Which leads into a bigger Candyman shrine. With actual candy laying around. But Helen runs out of film in her camera because this movie's really old. And then they talk to Anne Marie, the tenant of the building, and she's convinced that Candyman is real. Then we cut from the ghetto to fine dining with Benjamin Franklin, who tells us about Candyman. Long ago, he was a freed slave who fell in love with a plantation owner's daughter. But then a racist mob got him, sawed his hand off, covered him in honey, and watched him get stinged to death by bees. Next day, Helen goes back to Green to talk to Anne Marie, but she's out. So instead, she bugs this little kid. Jake tells her that there was a Candyman killing in the public bathroom. This is the fourth cleanest public bathroom I've ever seen. Then she's jumped by thugs, one of which is dressed like Candyman. She only gets a black eye for it, so she arrests Will I Am. Case closed. But then Jake calls her a snitch and says Candyman is railed, still out there. Two people get brutally murdered and the cops do nothing. There's a white woman goes in there and gets attacked and they lock the place down. Yeah. Too real. And then 45 minutes into this movie, we finally meet the real Candyman, played by the legendary Tony Todd. His voice is so cool, it's like he's speaking right into my soul. So Candyman tells her that apparently he lives because of the urban legend, kind of like Freddy Krueger. And she's hypnotized by his voice, like the audience is. The next day, she wakes up covered in blood, a dead dog, and holding a cleaver. We all been there. And she's in Anne Marie's place, and her baby's missing. One tussle and an arm slash later, the police show up. But she makes bail. Boy, I could really go for the delicious taste of Budweiser beer right now. I don't know why. Helen looks through her photos and sees Candyman in them. Whoa. And then Candyman bursts his way through her mirror because he does not approve of getting his photo taken without his permission. But not seriously, he's sweet on her, and wants her to be an urban legend just like him, in exchange for the baby. But then Bernadette walks in on this, and then she gets candied banned, and Helen gets the blame, and she goes to the asylum, and the doctor is trying to convince her there is no candy man, they have footage, there is no creepy African-American specter haunting her. But she says that she can prove that Sugar Ray is real, and with the convenient mirror in the room, she says candy man five times, and he appears! And he candies the doctor, but also sets her free. Because this is a 90s horror movie, so of course they have to make it a psychological thing. So she escapes, steals the nurse's outfit, goes back home, and oh, what a surprise that the, that the college professor moved on to the next hot young co-ed. So now with nothing, Helen goes to attack the Phantom of the Ghetto. And she just realizes that you can't kill a ghost. And then Candyman's offer to turn her into an urban legend ghost and return the baby still stands. And so she accepts, in the most Clive Barker way she could. And Candyman is covered in bees. These are real bees. Tony Todd was paid $1,000 every time he was stung by one. This only happened 23 times, which is pretty impressive it happened that little for how many bees are on him. And it turns out why he really likes Helen is because she's a reincarnation of the plantation daughter. Helen hears a big pile of scrap crying like a baby... So she realizes the baby's in there, and she goes climbing it with Candyman's hook. But oh no, Jake sees this, and decides to burn this mother down. But this is all according to Candyman's plan, because he wants to romantically burn away with Helen. But Helen says none of that, and stabs him with a burning stick. She climbs out of the burning pile of garbage, which is a good metaphor for the remake of this film, and saves the baby. But she still dies. 
Professor feels bad about this, so says her name. Five times. In the mirror. And she appears with a strobe light that kills the professor. Final body count. Six. That was Candyman, and it's great. It's both a very traditional and very unique horror film. A traditional that it's an urban legend that plot twist is real, but it's unique in that Tony Todd plays this role in an almost romantic sense. With his hypnotic voice and seduction, very different from other slasher films around the time. The cinematography is really well done with overhead shots that would have been brand new at the time, and some traditional 40s like heavy shadows, so wetting what's important in the scene. The soundtrack is really good. It's creepy, eerie, and really nice on the ears. The ghetto setting is unique. It's kind of like the modern old dark house setting, being a dark, scary place neglected by society. The acting's well done all around. The effects are great. And overall, I'll give this film a 10 out of 10. Definitely worth your time. But there are some strobing cuts, so you might not want to watch this if you're epileptic. 